side, uh, your commentators are Kirby and Zanny Boy, and I'm just gonna go straight ahead and hand it on over to you, Kirby. Okay, hello folks, welcome back to the Overwatch Oasis League. We are wrapping up this map rotation here in week 12 for tier 3, and we've got a great match to close this map rotation out. Cosmic Omnix versus Diving Phoenix, both of these teams right in the thick of that playoff picture right now. Cosmic Omnix currently in 7th place, which is in the playoffs, and Diving Phoenix right around that 4th place spot. So kind of, not really middle of the pack teams, but teams kind of looking to continue to further up the standings, get those top 3 seeds in order to pick your opponent for the playoffs, and obviously continue to build up momentum for the postseason. As time said, I am joined by Zanny Boy, who will be the play-by-play, -play, and I will be color tonight. We are back at it again with another KO game. Um, this <laughs> will be done fun. Yeah. We have Although done it several. It, it has been a while for me. I actually have not commentated since the Nova game back in week six, so... Neither have I, actually. That's, I think it's the last time I've actually commentated. Because and, and I was on vacation for a little while. And it's kind of interesting. Uh, a lot of the... Er, uh, we see that Cosmic Omnix, they're fairly different. They've picked up players like Rocky Top. They've got a new player, uh, Slim Thick here, going to play the Roadhog. But also they picked up recently Ooh. Resting Burst Face, one of the really good healers from that great I Need Healing team from last season. Yeah, you can see that um, KO has taken a page kind of out of uh, some other teams' book, uh, not even some other teams' book, but just kind of their own kind of page of we know champion um, very good teams from last season, just picking up players who were very good on that team, like Rocky Top and Resting Birchface. So. We do have both teams pushing in through the small room, but Zombie Doan on the Doomfist and Rocky Top just putting in the close range damage and two already go down to the Junkrat. And this is gonna have to force Diving Phoenix to pull back. They're down, they're Lucio and their Junkrat, but jokingly with the damage orb gets rid of uh, Slim and Sweet and Zombie Dylan though keep cleaning up and Diving Phoenix is gonna have to pull back. And it's tough because both of these teams, they have the double shield with the junk rat. So I think, in a way, if you just look at that in a vacuum, yes, going to that left room rotation is correct. But the problem with it is that Honey Biscuits here on the Ash had no sight lines whatsoever. So it was way easier for Zombie Dylan to kind of get in there and pump in more damage than Honey Biscuits had. If we pay attention to all charge here, we have Rocky Top, Party has that tire, and Zombie Dylan with the Meteor Strike. And Sweet pulls off Bambi. Bye bye into the empty abyss goes Bambi. Dark right needs go in. Freezy uh Freezy AJ gets rid of Zombie Dylan. Got Sweet two pulls two. two. So I mean the Orisa is popping off. Some mic troubles there for a second. Yeah, that's that's one thing about the the call that never really goes away are those uh, environmental kills. Both teams on the Lucio here, but obviously it was the Swede there with those nice pulls really shut that AJ team right down. Gets a pick on the zombie. Oh, AJ getting too early. This could lead them to get an uh, get an actual win on the fight here. Right, uh, AJ gets stopped out of his tire though, but our fault goes down and nobody really left for KO. It's just Sweet and Wu. Wukong, they do, they use the supercharger to commit to his zombie. Dylan on the Doomfist is stalling. Meter Strike comes through, but he does get off the point using it. But jokingly, Sirius does go down. So if a regroup happens from KO fast enough with a five man push, this could be winnable. Ooh. Yeah, and I was just about to praise Cosmic Omnix for their alt discipline there. At, at least we'll see Zombie swap. Dylan gonna swap to the Reaper, and the Swede's gonna swap to Roadhog as well. So you could argue that they were swapping alts, but I think I would have kept them and gone into that next fight. Because now, Supercharges, how are they gonna Supercharges be able very... to? Yeah, how are they gonna be able to push into this to Bambi Supercharger? 
Supercharger is a very beneficial ult in this meta right now. Tyre comes through, gets the Supercharger, but you're already down two with your KO. Down three. Swede gets a pick on the John Hawk, but I don't think it'll be enough. Zombie Dylan going in that room as the Reaper and AJ on that Junkrat, just blowing him up. Swede though, in the back lines, trying to pressure the Ash. Honey, in trouble. Boop, Swede goes flying. Oh, when pigs fly, it is majestic. And, and I am, I'm honestly kind of confused at why the Swedes switched to the Roadhog. I, I actually thought they were playing the double shield pretty well, and you can play double shield effectively, and especially considering how much value they were getting on those Arisa poles, I, I am a little, I, I'm, I'm questioning that, that swap here. I, the only I, thing I get I the Reaper, but yeah. in the double shield with the dive, but... The only thing I can really see the Hog useful for is getting rid of that Winston, but a big hook on the AJ, falling low, Colossus comes through, and a beat drop, a big shatter though, from Slim, Wu go, gets a, Wu gets a pick on Doc, Tyre comes through from AJ though, looking for something, it's still in the air, and four, it gets four, but it's only Bambi, it's only Bambi alive, and even though the Tyre got four, and Honey, Honey gets spotted, even though four got uh, taken out by the tire, Chaos still wants the fight. As Diamond Phoenix trying to make a fight out of this, John Hawk comes in on the wrecking ball, just to maybe put some pressure on there. But the rest of Ko is back. And you're gonna have to be a regroup from Diamond Phoenix, but someone has to touch the point, and it will be John Hawk on the wrecking ball. The big story is is can Doctor Grill maybe displace the halting bot? Oh, Doctor Grill boops off Swede right as you say that. Bob goes in from Honey. Honey and Grill doing the thing. But Zombie Dylan gets three with Reaper all. Bambi trying to be a miracle with the Reinhardt, but the Bob trying to also do some um, do some damage, but it's not enough. KO will take map one on the ball. Yeah, and that was just good positioning. Knew that the Lucio was kinda over towards the abyss trying to find those environmental kills and was able to just get right in position for a nice death blossom zombie Dylan. Definitely have to start considering him up there in the elite DPS conversation. He has been electrifying this season is and has been one of the main reasons why this team has kinda resurged. You know, they've they've struggled so far here in the first three seasons, but now it looks like they they have a good chance at clinching a playoff berth soon and no, we'll see what they can do in the playoffs. They've, they've looked pretty strong this season. For sure. You just see uh, the double shield coming from Diving Phoenix, John Hawk on the Arisa, Bambi on the Rhine, and a Rhine Diva from KO as Bambi immediately picks off Zombie Dylan. I'm a Kree Junkrat comp here. Pretty interesting uh, saying that the Diving Phoenix is going to stick on this Ash with Honey Biscuit, so maybe. Zombie Dylan should run to Ash of his own, maybe to contest that, but Honey, the Dynamite just slowly ticks down Sweet's health bar, gets a pick on the Zombie Dylan, and as I was saying, McCree's don't really win sniper duels, they win duels against the targets that are CC, um, what's the work I'm looking for? CC vulnerable, I guess. And I think the main reason why we saw Diamond Phoenix won that, win that fight is not just because they had the Ash instead of the Bree, but just because Dr. Grill on that Lucio got them to the point first, they were able to easily set up that double shield, and Honey Biscuits was remained uncontested and was able to pump in a lot of damage to KO there, so they couldn't really move on to the point to, to try and contest that double shield. You do see the double shield come back from KO, but with a Sigma instead of an Arisa. Coalescence coming through from Wu, just trying to keep his whole team alive. Pin from Bambi onto Slim. Slim gets taken out, but Zombie Dylan takes out AJ. A lot of damage from DP gets taken out, but there's no Rhine shield for KO. Even fight here. You see Bambi has the Shatter, could be looking for it. Shatter comes through, gets the Sigma. He's able to stay alive due to the healing. No real ults coming from KO, but you still have four, make that three actually, from Diving Phoenix, and they're gonna win this fight, but KO is coming into this fight with just about three ults, but same thing with Diving Phoenix, actually four with the Supercharger. 
Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see Zombie Dylan about to build up Bob here. That, that'll be kind of the battle. Who can put the Bob into a better position? Will we see Dr. Grill or Allfall be able to displace him? Tire from AJ gets three! AJ gets five! Tire from Rocky tops, tops. Oh, nope. Nothing doing. And a clean sweep from Diving Phoenix on Shrine. And that was that was methodical. Yeah, I, I definitely like that Arisa Ryan comp better there on, on Shrine there. It's it, it it's so much better especially when you get set up on the point, it's hard to be able to contest that Arisa, you know, having the fortifies and using that double shield and, and they did a good job at they had people go up with the aggressing Ryan, but they also had people to peel back for that Arissa for Diving Phoenix, so that was just, I, I liked the Arissa there, I think that was the, the main difference. You see Diving Phoenix running the Winston instead of the Arisa here, but you see KO running the Symmetra, maybe to try and, you know, teleport the point faster and just overall take dominance with those Sim turrets, but Honey is going to be sticking on this Ash. Close quarters means for big dynamites. Slimbo goes in swinging and John Hawk goes down first. Bambi has a pin, gets stunned up, is able to get the healing, but does fall low. Rocky Top goes down on the Symmetra. You just see Dr. Grill getting the pick there. Zombie Dylan though keeps putting in those shots on the McCree. Already 70 to the High Noon. Slim, 75 to the Shatters. Bambi's at 50. Honey though almost has the bomb, but you do see Honey taking out Slim. No Shatter possibility. Pin from Bambi doesn't get anything. Ooh, woo, it's taken down. Arfalk just trying to wall right around, just contest point as KO did take point. Sigma all used, so is the beat drop. Beat drop from Arfalk, you Zombie Dylan gets a pick on the AJ. High noon from Zombie Dylan holds it. Dr. Grill goes down, KO can turn the fight. Slim is back on the Reinhardt, just swinging. Shatter gets Bambi, Bambi down the ground. Sean Hawk though on this Winston, still going, and nobody can stop the monkey. But KO you gets 40%, just about. I, I was actually going to say, John Hawk should maybe swap off the Winston playing into that uh, Sim McCree, but Rocky Top never really able to kind of set up on the point, never able to, despite the fights going on for a long time, never really able to get that high beam charge, so now he's going to go to the Reaper, which is further going to shut down this Winston. Yeah, you see four ults from Diving Phoenix still, and the Coalescence was just used. Coalescence coming in. AJ uses the tire, and Diving Phoenix, though, they just used four ults. They used the beat drop late last fight. They used the Coalescence, the Primal Rage, and the tire that last fight. They have Bob and Shatter, but they don't really have any ults for this next fight, but neither does KO, so this could benefit them. Yeah, a hundred percent. That was that was fairly worth the trade. I think you know that they've been swapping their heroes a lot. I mean, they still got the Bob and the Shatter. They can easily win this next fight with that and put it basically into one team fight territory, which is exactly what you're gonna want for for Diving Phoenix. You just see KO though taking this high ground just to you know try and assert a high ground establishment so they can maybe drop onto Diving Phoenix when they least expect it. You just see the drop drop from. Uh, from Slim, High Noon comes through, Bob gets taken out by the High Noon, but the um, Zombie Dylan gets taken out by John Hawk, but Slim easily punishes John Hawk for the overextend. No tanks for Diving Phoenix, but AJ is still alive on this Junkrat, putting in damage from the back. The healing coming in, Swede lifts on Sigma, jokingly in, AJ go down to the Flux. Dr. Grill just trying to stall on this Lucio, Honey gets rid of Zombie Dylan on the Tracer. Honey's dynamite does get kind of, sort of blocked, doesn't actually get anyone. John Fox switches to the Arisa in 99%. Rocky Top gets rid of Bambi and then gets rid of John Hawk, and it will be the flip in for KO's um, in favor of KO. Well, one thing for Diving Phoenix is you're happy that Arfalk uses Sound Barrier that could have been used to counter the Shatter here from 
Bambi if played right. The big thing here for KO to turn this map around is if Rocky Top can build up this Death Blossom really quickly and use it very effectively. They don't really have a lot of tools to be able to shut it down except maybe a pin from Bambi and an accretion stun from John Hawk. Bambi though, falling low on that Reinhardt, he does get the healing to pick him back up, they use Coalescence early, maybe just have some sustain there in the fight, Shatter, beat drop used by, um, by, um, Diamond Phoenix, Bambi gets two with the pin, Tucker Girl gets Rocky Top, and that is insane for Diving Phoenix, is they're gonna take the point right back. Swede trying to stay alive, no one left for KO. No one able to touch, and Bambi with the tactical crouch will finish first map as DP takes map one. And it was it was interesting because I, I I didn't see who it was. I think it was Bambi Shatter that uh, canceled Rocky Top's Death Blossom. It also might have been uh, John Hawk's Accretion as well, but they shut that down again. That was kind of a win condition there for. For KO, you know, that was the only one that Rocky Top ended up building up, and you know, you expect a Reaper Alt to get a lot of value, especially when you're already set up on the point like that, so nice job from the tanks of Diving Phoenix to be able to call that out and be able to counter it. For sure, and now you look at, um, you look at map one and you think uh ko looked like they had a pretty strong like understanding of nepal from sanctum and then shrine they just got absolutely destroyed they kind of had like no no alts that whole round any alts they had were either got no value or got cancelled and then on village you saw like it like you said rocky tops death blossom gets cancelled by shatter they just their alt discipline first map on Nepal was great, and then they couldn't seem to find where they were in these last two maps. Yeah, I think one other thing about that is it, it's kind of weird because normally the McCree is better on Village there, but I just overall think that maybe Ko wasn't contesting Honey Biscuits enough. Maybe they needed like a a tracer or something to to harass honey biscuits because it felt like honey biscuits was almost never dying and just kind of hanging out behind the shields pumping in a lot of damage you know we we've talked a lot about honey biscuits this season she's been one of the best not just dps in tier three but just best players certainly an mvp candidate i nominated them for uh dps mvp in my podcast and I don't think anyone would disagree. They have been nothing short of remarkable at times. Like, capable of turning around losing fights. It's happened so many times this year where Diving Phoenix will be down two players and Honey Biscuits will just get, like, three straight headshots. For sure. Um, in that last map, too, I want to um, mention, you know, people who aren't really always sung heroes. Um... Dr. Grill and Jokingly, they were remarkable on the support, Jokingly using that Coalescence early almost every fight just to make sure they had extra sustain going into those fights, and Dr. Grill timing her beat drops pretty well, I think every single one of those maps, there may have been one that was wasted, but I mean, uh, overall, they did really good at making sure that their beat drops and their support ults were not wasted. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Normally, we've kind of labeled Diving Phoenix as kind of the pop-off team, you know, they have Honey Biscuits just absolutely pop-off. They've, they've got a lot of other players that can do the same thing too, but that was definitely a great team display there. They were playing around the, the double shield very well. They were building alts effectively and using them effectively, you know, like, if Diving Phoenix can kind of become more of just that you know, kind of carried, not carried by Honey Biscuits, but that's because that's not true at all. They 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 have a great roster, but you know, definitely sometimes you do feel like, especially in a couple of their losses, that you could tell that the team play wasn't quite up to snuff, especially in the uh, the Nova game. But if they're 
improving that for the playoffs, this could be an incredibly scary team. Yeah, for sure. I think um, in these last two, um, not last two, um, these last, I think the last at least half of the season has been kind of back and forth with Diving Phoenix. Uh, beginning of the season, they were dominant, didn't lose a single game, I think, until their fifth game. I think they were 4 0. Yeah, that was against uh, Pizza Planet. Pizza which Planet. it was it was a close game. And it was kind it of was... funny. Like, a another thing that Diving Phoenix has been good at this season are, like, winning those scrappy fights. And we actually kind of saw that there a couple times on, on Nepal. But in that particular game, Pizza Planet was actually kind of beating them at their own game. And, you know, that was one of the few times that we have seen Honey Biscuits kind of get shut down, you know? Super Ninja there on the far are playing incredibly well, so... You know, once again, if this team... You know, sometimes it felt like they were defined whether or not Honey Biscuits got shut down. But again, if, if they are able to continue that... You know, it, it wasn't like Honey Biscuits was popping off that map, you know? Like, they were doing really well, she but it was, was just more staying of how alive team, and just Yeah, it was, it was more of how the team damage. was playing around it and using, or t taking advantage of, of sight lines with the double shield. Like, so ag again, if, if Diving Phoenix is able to not only continue to win scrappy fights because they have the pop-off potential from their dps and even even their tanks for sure at times um but in, in addition to winning you know more coordinated fights against really good teams that that's when you know that this team could be a a championship contender yeah for sure um one one more thing i want to mention is that um after that loss to Pizza Planet, they've kind of been like on like a kind of they'll win two and then lose one or they'll lose another and then win two more. Not like not on that undefeated kind of mean streak they were on at the beginning. They were they kind of became like the kind of not middle of the pack, but more of a not powerhouse. Like if you know what I'm saying, like in between middle of the pack and powerhouse. Well, yeah, they, they went 0-2 in that third map rotation, and in my power rankings, I, I just could not justify them above 6th place. Like, every team, I felt, was at least had a stronger map rotation. I, I definitely, it felt weird, because I still felt like they were one of the strongest teams. And, and you know, even even their game against Pizza Planet, I, you could argue that Diving Phoenix would have won that game maybe s six out of ten times, seven out of ten times, but that was just the game where Super Ninja really popped off and they, Pizza Planet were able to get the victory. N the Nova game was definitely kind of their most one-sided pair of the seasons, but since then they've kind of, they they've only played one game, but if they win here and go 2-0 and in this map rotation, then, then they're right back to being a top team, although a lot of teams starting to really separate themselves from the middle of the pack both c9 and white walkers playing incredibly well white lately. walkers has never been middle of the pack this season though they've always been i, I mean dominant. You're right. you know, but you know what i'm saying like they, they're yeah. clearly the championship oh and zombie dylan had a hunt first uh honey as she gets both honey and jokingly and that fight's already over bambi though hiding in a corner looking for a pin on sweet but sweet able to evade it Sweet on the Reinhardt here, though. Sweet, this is one of his better heroes. He's gotten multiple MVPs, I believe, for this Reinhardt. So let's see if he... Two or three. Two. Two or three. Still, that's... For, it's pretty much for that Reinhardt as he goes in. Swings, he's already 62. The Shattered Rocky gets jokingly again. And they're down their main healer. They can't really push forward here. Bambi, though, trying to play aggro. Sweet goes down. Maybe Dev Fix can, but AJ gets picked by Zombie Dylan. Zombie Dylan sitting in the pack, sitting in the back, clicking heads. Honey, though, on the ash, trying to contest it. But Zombie Dylan knows he has to back up. Not going to take that fight one-on-one. -on -one. 
And I actually kind of liked resting first face, not going for the res there. Probably would have gotten headshot by Honey Biscuits. And look at this, the Swede's already back. And they've got used in. Woo face. gets stuck. Rocky Top gets taken out by the Coalescence, but Swede can just continue to swing. Jokingly, though, gets two with the Coalescence. AJ gets Zombie Dylan, the res on the Rocky Top, though, who has the tire fire in the hole. Bye bye, Bambi. And KO turns it around with three kills of their own. Slim gets two. The baby diva only one on point and Slim gets three and a grab. But KO used three ults there. They used the shatter, they used the and both DPS ults, but I mean it, whatever to save the point and Time Fix didn't even get a tick. And last season, Resting Bird's Face was one of the best mercies in tier three and right there kinda of making I believe this is... Uh, did she play in the... Uh, uh, the Duck Duck Dive game, I'm not 100% sure, but that was a great play, not resing the Rhine and resing Rocky Top, who got value out of the tire. And AJ only gets one with the tire, but Sweet and Rocky Top already get Bambi and jokingly in the grab, but AJ, trying to turn the fight around, gets multiple picks, but Sweet gets rezzed by resting Burge Face. Sweet is able to just get right back out of that fight. Rocky Top gets AJ in the Junkrat duel, and that'll be KO putting a pretty strong defense here for point A. And, and another great play from Resting Burst Face. Another nice res. Knew that they could get away with the res onto the line because I don't think Honey Biscuits was looking at him. So, again, the, the mercy is paying huge dividends. It's those reses overall and, and damage boosting these DPS, making it hard for Diving Phoenix to get through this tough choke, which we have seen a couple full holds on Eichenwald. It is certainly one of those hybrids on Apple that you see it. Zombie Dylan got uh, a pick on the chuck that really staggered them, but they were to wait. Rocky Top, Tara comes in, Dr. Grill uses the beat drop, saves her team. Like I was saying earlier, beat drops have been pretty exceptional today. Rocky gets killed and the tire gets nothing. Big shatter from Sweet though! Knocks down five! And Sweet is just gonna keep rolling this team. But there is Ash, the and Dr. Grill are still on the point though. Bob does um, jump away, his people do need him. Um Honey though gets the pick on the Birch face. But Honey gets a pick out of Rocky Top 2. Diving Phoenix can win this fight just based off of Honey and Doc staying alive. Honey gets trapped, but there's no drunk rat to see that and kill him. And it looks like Diving Phoenix somehow turns the tables. Like you said so earlier, Honey stays alive, gets kills, and wins the fight. Yeah, uh, and of course the play there was the great sound barrier to stop Rocky Top's tire, but... Oh man, Resting Burge Face I think should have used the Valkyrie there at the end. Could have healed both of the tanks and even given them the damage boost to kind of close out that fight. And then Resting Burge Face used it on the re-engage, but they figured it was too late and had to disengage. So, a lot of praise for Resting Burge Face here. Great plays there on that first offense. But... Shatter comes through, them. knocks down two. Sweet blocked it for himself though. Bambi just speeds right on him. Tire from AJ, doesn't get anything, Wu gets Bambi with the Coalescent, Swede gets Rezzed, Shatter gets nothing, Sigma Shield plays pretty well by Chuck, but Slim gets Dr. Grill and KO able to turn the fight around with the Rez onto Swede, giving them their main tank back in that fight. So we kind of know Bambi is a very aggressive tank at times, definitely one of the most aggressive tanks. And I think the Swede is doing a really good job at punishing his aggression with counter pins and just overall good callouts because Bambi is not lasting long in a lot of these fights, actually. We know, we, uh, we know Swede is an aggressive Ryan, but he's kind of used his aggressiveness to help him by countering Bambi's aggression by playing passive. Once they kill Bambi, they just aggress even harder. Grab though, comes in, beat drop used, tire from Rocky Top, just kind of circling the perimeter, Zombie Dylan's Bob though, getting jokingly, tire comes in, gets Bambi, and that's a lost fight, as three ults used by KO, but, I mean, it's a team wipe, so why not use all of them, and Rocky Top traps AJ, and AJ has no chance of living that one, but Honey, punishes the overextension, and no! Oh no! Oh no, that... 
That's tragic. Swede trying to back up, but Bambi can play aggressive here. Has the speed boost. Rocky Top gets honey though. That's a big pick. No mercy on the side of Diamond Phoenix to Reza in. Rocky and KO can just play aggressive now because Rocky Top and Swede have just kind of played passive, waited for their team to come back, and right when the time was right, play aggressive, get the picks, and win the fight. And I think one player we haven't highlighted yet, except at the beginning when we said that this was the debut game, is Slim Bay. I think he's been playing incredibly well on this Zarya. Great bubble management, bubbling Swede when he goes aggressive, and just overall staying alive with that high charge. Multiple times they were kind of in that long fight and just ended up bursting down the members of Diving Phoenix pretty easily. So, great debut here from, from Slim Thick. Yeah, for sure. And now you you see um, not a full hold, almost a full hold, but then they kind of made a couple mistakes on that last fight. But, I mean, they still hold halfway through second point, and usually um, getting holding right there on second point, too, is not very easy because of just so many ways to get around and flank behind the team. I'm surprised they actually didn't do that. They had plenty of opportunities with that Reinhardt Lucio to speed through the castle and maybe even take high ground and just force Zombie Dolan and Rocky Top off the high grounds where they were just lobbing in damage. But in hindsight, I guess that's what they should have done. But, I mean, too late to fix it. And, yeah, usually you see the payload usually snowballing at least to the bridge but good job from cosmic comics to stop it at an easier spot that it's still right at that choke under the bridge which can be tricky at times depending on what rotations you like to take but certainly more winnable than if it were to have gotten across the bridge dynamite comes in from zombie till and he does throw it a little short though you see a ryan diva coming from ko and a double shield comp from uh, Devin Phoenix says they already have broken Sweet Shield, but he's just gonna swing past and get to them as you do see a good rotation from Diving Phoenix, able to rotate back and take establish a further defense onto the point. But Sweet just kind of stuck in that room. The dynamites from Honey are putting in a lot of damage, but Rocky Top already 74 to the tires. AJ only at 25. Sweet swinging on Chuck. Chuck gets caught out. So is jokingly by the D.Va and the tank line of KO. Even when they're missing Kakashi, they still seem to be able to just put in pressure. AJ on the Junkrat. D.Max Slim. Doesn't matter. Rocky Top is just putting in the work on this Junkrat. And Slim gets Bambi in the baby D.Va form. They take point A. Pretty easy. And, and I'm not 100% sure on Freezy AJ's hero pool, but I almost think maybe they should swap off the Junkrat just because Rocky Top is such a smart player. He knows what flanks that Junkrats like to go on, and he often gets the one up on other Junkrat players, like just in, in any game he plays. And it, that's why it's tough to, to play a Junkrat into him, and he tends to build tires point out. Ooh, Supercharger from Bambi used early in the fight, but does end up getting Slim DMAC. But like I was saying earlier, you saw, like you're saying, Rocky Top's a smart player. Rocky was at 75 to tire when AJ was at 25. Of course, they both have tire right now, but still, that alt charge difference is insane. Especially when they're when one of them's on defense and he has the lower one. Usually, you'd think the defensive one has higher, but just because of pure. Oh! They got slammed up by a Junkrat mine. Diva yeah. bomb! Slim! With a big bomb! Tire comes in from AJ, gets two as well, but it might be too late. Tire from Rocky doesn't get anything but Freezy. AJ gets get taken out by Zombie Dylan. It's just Lucio and Bambi, and they can't touch the point. And KO takes map two. I, I was gonna account. mention something. I was gonna mention something about their win condition there at the end being squeeze shatter because that was the only. It was pretty much the only all that wasn't matched by 
Diamond Phoenix, and I was like, no, oh my when, when the concussion actually. line, when the, when the concussion line ooped him out of the shatter, but luckily, in, in all that chaos, Slim Thick th throws in a nice diva bomb over the bridge. Sometimes, in, in cases like that, you, you can really throw off a team just by throwing it above them, make them not know exactly where it's going, especially if they lose it when it goes over the bridge, so... Great job by Slim Thick to take advantage of the chaos and kind of win that team fight for them. Also resting Birchface playing around Slim Thick there. Slim Thick was one of the only tanky people left on the point there after Freezy's tire, so almost went down and was able to keep themselves alive. Yeah, you saw um, Bambi kind of make a lot of mistakes on that Reinhardt on Eichenwald. He he got caught out playing too aggressive on some fights. He kind of Swede in that shatter pins Bambi and just immediately shatters and Bambi can't protect his whole team and it's a five or six man shatter from uh, From Swede just putting in the tank difference That is mandatory in games almost And yeah, it'll be interesting, you know Slim Thick playing a lot of Zarya here. Kakashi also plays Zarya, but showing D.Va there, maybe they will be kind of the D.Va specialist whenever they want to play D.Va, but they can also play the the Zarya as well, and Kakashi Even the Reinhardt. Did Slim Thick play some Reinhardt? Slim played Reinhardt in Nepal. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, when the Swede was on... Uh... That uh, leaves Arisa and Roadhog, you're right. That leaves Kale with like three Reinhardt players. Kakashi plays Reinhardt, Swede plays Reinhardt, Slim plays Reinhardt. They're they're kind of a team that just runs like three guys who play have the same kind of tank pool. Except the big difference is Kakashi's wrecking ball, who's been absolutely crazy so far this season. That is true. But Dr. Grill again with those big beat drops. This map, that is something that Diamond Phoenix has done well. Is they're, they've been able to use their support all support all really well. The supports are really the highlight of that their team right now. Um, jokingly, Sirius and Dr. Grill have been pretty good today. Yeah, and I. I know we've been kind of talking about the tank battle here and, you know, Rocket Top and Honey Biscuits, but I definitely think the, the backbone of these teams right now are the supports. Wukong kind of getting a little more playtime than usually. Usually he gets, you know, he usually gets about two maps, but looks like they're going to get the third map here. Kind of kind of forget that he's kind of the the organizer of this team, you know, he's been with Cosmic Omnic slash Legion of Doom since the beginning, so it's it's good to see that he was finally able to, you know, build a team that has as good a synergy as this right now, and, you know, we'll, we'll see. As you if say that, he does get one. subbed out for all folk. Oh, shoot. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. You jinxed him, man. You jinxed him. Oh, man. They heard you. They're listening. Stream sniping. You better check. I I'm gonna check, because they might have done that just to spite me. But <laughs> Hey, but, but they still, did that. Play playing they... the first two maps already, it's, it's just as many as they usually do. And typically, they they'll come in in the later half of the game. So I actually would not be surprised if we maybe see um, our Falk and... Wukong again on uh, Dorado. Yeah, it is interesting that you say that because Wu is playing the Moira a lot, but our Falk is also a pretty kind of their Moira player as they go back to spelling simp. Um, so yeah, that, but AJ, we haven't seen AJ at all today, which is. What a weird Sorry, knowing that he is. Right. I'm gonna hand this over to you, Kirby, for the name changes. Yep. Okay. But yeah, it's weird because AJ is um 
debatably the best support on this team next to I'd say resting Birchface, but I mean they haven't put him in yet, so maybe this is maybe he's their secret weapon. If they go to a map five, they might put AJ in. And we see we seem to be their map five curse. So if they go to map five, we might see AJ. Yeah, we have seen Cosmic Omnix go to a lot of map fives this season, so and considering how close this series looks so far, let me put in S. <laughs> They're the diving phoenix of this season. Except for they yeah, exactly. win them, not fives. They win them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to slight your team, but I feel like the Tantalizers are actually the diving phoenix of this season. Losing yeah, it's sad. It's, it's yeah. sad. I'm the, I, I was cast in that game against C9, and I, I love C9 as much as much as the next. I think they've been a great team, but man, was I a little bit sad when y'all lost that. That one was. Yeah, I was trying to Ash Jewel pander, and it was just it was it was hard. I I think now most of the league, especially after that game, knows how about let's not Ash Jewel pander. Not actual me. I almost won that most of the time. It was just Silent Tamer kept putting pressure on me every time I went to go aim at him. It's true. I had to go McCree because of that. But yeah. Oh, um, Red Hood Kitty coming in with the the season one facts, trying to steal my clout, my knowledge of all the seasons here. But yes, she is correct. Legion of Doom did not get a single real victory in their first season they were definitely i mean I, I don't think anyone's gonna argue and i don't think i'm gonna hurt anyone's feelings they were definitely the worst team in season one they got better in season two and i even think that they were getting better in in season three it's just they weren't getting better fast enough because so many other teams were getting better in season three it really felt like, like i need healing was, uh... <laughs> yeah exactly it really felt like uh Season 3, we just saw a lot of teams really reach their full potential. But now, Cosmic Comics may be a season late, but here they are reaching their full potential. And e even despite a lot of other teams really making a resurgence, obviously Diving Phoenix missed the playoff last season. You know, if they, if they win tonight, they'll clinch their playoff spot. So definitely a comeback season for them. Something, and, something, oh, so, go ahead, sorry. Oh, and I, I was just going to say we see two new teams, White Walkers and C9, kind of being... Arguably the two, the, the two best teams right now. Yeah, but um, we something I'm seeing right now that I kind of didn't. We have I don't think we've pointed out yet. As Lady of Siren comes in on Hanamura, we might see a Sombra or a, a May on defense uh, or a Far on offense. Honestly, Siren plays those three heroes, all of them pretty well. Um, I just I want to see the Sombra because you know I think Sombra is such a fun hero to see because just I like to see how teams capitalize on Sombra hacks and EMPs and how teams will try and counter Sombra. So they might also play some uh, Farah has played some Farah to some great success as well. Although Honey I, I, is I on the hit that, scan, yeah, I was so. going to say that might not be a good idea, but. But you never know, maybe Zombie Dylan will play the Ash here, try to contest him to give as much free reign to Lady of Siren, because I, I would imagine Lee Ratty's probably going to play mostly projectile, playing, mainly playing Junkrat so far this season. So That's a, that's a lot of things that have happened um, so far. It's kind of been... It's kind of been Farah to run far into a really good hit scan, but the other hit scan for the Farah's team will kind of contest that other hit scan, so the Farah really has free reign because the hit scan isn't paying attention to them. And we are also going to see Steph coming in for Diving Phoenix. has been also a another unsung hero of this resurgence for Diving Phoenix. Really great on that Lucio. Kind of kind of seems like a pretty solid shot caller. I actually think that they tend to look their best with with Steph in, not not just like jokingly serious or for Algatron. I mean, they're both great players as well. But I I think I like I I would honestly say that Steph might have one of the better Lucios in tier three right now. For sure, but um, with Steph coming in, it, is Doctor Girl gonna get subbed out for uh, for Algatron, or is Doctor Girl gonna play the Anna? Is something I'm wondering. That, that is exactly what I'm thinking. They they might run like a 
um, and yeah, Lucio. Like an, an, an Lucio comp. We'll, we'll kind of see. Maybe I'm, I'm just trying to think because Doctor Grill has played a, a pretty wide variety of healers. I think for the most pretty... part, I, I think can play that that Moira as well. So she's very uh, flexible. Yeah. And I, I've played with Dr. Girl. She is really good, but I think her Anna is just very good. She charges Nano very fast. Nades are on point. I just want to see some nice sleeps. I want to see good sleep darts there. Uh, you fun, mind fun to see. That right over, uh, Kirby, and then I oh, I am so a... sorry. No, you're okay. I, I was getting ready. Um, but yeah, uh, they have readies from both teams. If you just hand that over, I'll start the game. Okay. But the, the other point I was going to make about Dr. Grill is he's just a smart player, too. Like, was a smart DPS player playing a lot of May last season. And, and I just like when she plays the Ash, the positioning a lot of times, oh, taking high ground sight lines that they don't have to... If a team's going to go after her, they're going to have to invest resources I'm to get to her. Okay. And she does such a good job at playing from those long sight lines and providing that long-range healing that you can get from from that on up from the we'll Anna. See. yeah especially with nano boost could help Bambi with these kind of aggressive over pushes by nanoing him you know the damage reduction and what you take when you get nanoed it might help with being that aggro Rhine that Bambi is they might just try Ready on this battle. uh on attack when they attack they might put dr. girl on the Anna and just kind of have Bambi feed a bit and get nano almost first fight so he can just charge in there but you do see uh steph on the baptiste here interesting i i he, he's probably played baptiste at some point maybe, maybe not i i i'm not 100 percent sure i feel like i only seen him play lucio if i'm being honest so maybe a new look here from steph we'll have to see how he, how he does here on bap bap definitely i think they also play mercy some mercy as well yeah i think you're you're right uh but Bap, one of the best healers in the game right now, just pumps out so much raw healing. Not only with those this primary fire, but also just that regenerative burst, as well as the immortality field, which is essentially an alt, I mean. We just see Siren on the Sombra, but she translocates into a trap. That is a sad sight to see. But so did they did they throw the translocator like over the the wall and it they threw it right through the, the window threw it through the window and landed on the translocator that's just unlucky or on the junk rat trap yeah oh, I don't think you could do that again if you tried like no <laughs> that's crazy but you do see Siren able to translocate two point but gets caught out again they are tracking the Sombra really well. And without that, you don't really have any frontline damage. Swede and Slim are kind of just stuck at this choke without a Sombra hack. Siren's got to start trying to do something here. Zombie Dylan just trying to put in shots, maybe we can yeah, test Honey on that. Yeah, in that bag. Zombie Dylan just can't find the sidelines either. No way they're going to be able to effectively push out here. battle Honey Biscuits here. Honey Biscuits has such a sire from there. Lee gets Slim. Swede falling low, almost has the shatter. Siren gets the translocator through. Dynamite used, but doesn't get her. Siren finally got into the back line without getting caught out. We'll see if that can be the difference maker here. They are trying to find Siren as she seems to have been found by the junk rat, but puts in the damage and gets out. And so far, SS Steph, Siren doing putting really damage well. on the honey. Kind of doing what, what so Shatter Bill comes does. through from both teams. No one goes down. Sweets, though, still playing aggros. There's no DPS from, um, Doc Phoenix kind of putting any work in, but John Hawk puts the, um, Gravitic Flux, but Dr. Girl goes down. Sweet swings the hammer and gets him. Hack on the Bambi, and Bambi goes down instantly. Like I said, how you capitalize on those hacks is what makes Sombra a difference maker? Steph on the Baptiste, trying to escape. Honey, though, still on this point as Ash. Almost ha has the bomb, could throw it, but they are one shot. So they will not throw it, but... KO, rough start, but once they got their Sombra in there, they were set. 
one thing I was worried about is how slow Lady of Siren was charging up that alt, but now that they can use it for point B here, they actually have a decent chance of maybe snowballing it here. It's the only alts that Diamond Phoenix have to work with are the Amp Matrix, the Sound Barrier, and the Bob, which look at that, sound right off the bat, from Doc we'll see used, but Doc gets, EM, uh, Doc gets hacked, EMP used, gets five. Honey, the only one that it doesn't get hacked, but Honey and Lee, Ratty, putting in the work on Rat, and Slim not able to live, and that's the Junkrat putting in work as Siren gets caught by the trap. Uh, that is rough, but we'll see if they stick on the Sombra here. They probably will. Yeah. Um, I think the priority hack target here has to be the Baptiste. Yeah, so, so what I was gonna say is... You could argue that there are not a lot of great hack targets for this comp that Diving Phoenix are running because you got both of these DPS who get most of their value from their primary fire. I mean, yeah, you can definitely hack the Baptiste, but even he still puts out a lot of healing with his primary fire. Tire from Lee, the hack from um, Lady Siren onto Dr. Grill goes from about 20 to EMP to 40, so big ult charge coming in, but our fault. Gets taken down, and Lee Ratty on this junk ride on the flank is taking care of all of KO. Siren though, just still sneaking around those back lines, looking for hack targets, looking to just Jenny and P. Honey though is putting on a clinic this map. Yeah, and the story for this next fight is who has the bigger Shatter or the Sweeter or Bambi, and and even beyond that, we'll have to see which alt gets the better follow-up, the Gravitic Flux, or the Graviton Surge. Shatter comes in, gets John Hawk, Immortality comes through, Bambi gets hacked though, and Bambi got hacked out of a Shatter, I believe. Sweet, pins through Coalescence from resting Birchface, gets rid of the Immortality and keeps the team up. Slim gets two with the Zarya, Lee gets Zombie Dylan. Honey though, still alive on this Ash, putting in the hipfire shots. Siren gets rid of that very problematic junk red. Bambi pinning back onto point. Hack doesn't go through from Siren. Siren has the EMP though. Gets the hack on the honey. Honey can't launch her dynamites. Gets two though. EMP used maybe to try and make something happen here, but honey is still putting in shots. Oh my goodness. She never ceases to amaze me. It's actually insane the amount of fights that she can turn around. But I I don't know. Slim Thick kind of holding on to that Graviton Surge, I think, for a little bit too long. I think they should have used it when Diving Phoenix were only down to about three players there at one point, especially before the BAP came back with the, uh, the Immortality Field. So I'll we'll have to see if they use it this next fight. And Swede swaps to the Sigma, so you got... Two off tank um, here. This will be interesting. Yeah, you see the rally used by Dr. Grill, keeping her whole team armored up. Bambi gets two. Gets Zombie Dylan and Arfok with the Reinhardt. Siren, though, getting Honey Biscuits off that high ground with the Sombra, putting in shots from far away on to about the Baptiste, but does just translocate out of there. And they only had to use the rally in order to win that fight. Luckily, we didn't see. Uh, Cosmic Onyx use any alts themselves, but they're going to be running into a Bob just as Zombie Dylan has. They're also going to be running at, into the Junkrat tire, which can be really deadly on Hanamura with these tight hallways. And, and you could even have John Hawk build up that Gravitic Clutch before the Sweet does. Tire from Lee Ratty gets three! Oh my, and the grab was used by Slim and KO. Looks like they will be held second point unless a miracle happens with Sweet on this wrecking ball. Zombie Dylan can use Bob to contest. Should use Bob right here. No! Oh my goodness. Sweet gets stunned so we can't touch. And Diving Phoenix will hold second point. And I, one thing I, I wanted to mention there was Bambi completely whiffing his shatter. I think tried to 
fly up from the high or tried to go down to the low ground and completely miss. Luck luckily it didn't matter. It's kind of they had won that team fight anyway with the junk rat tire, and they knew that they were probably going to win the map. <laughs> Another thing that was interesting that I, I want to point out is that overtime almost got initiated <laughs> because Bambi almost pinned uh, the Swede back into the point. Which I thought, which I think would have been kind of funny, like, Bambi, kind of... For sure. One of the... One thing I, I don't think I've mentioned is that Bambi's Ryan personality is actually kind of kind of interesting, you know, kind of... To, to censor myself, give no fricks kind of attitude, you know, like... <laughs> and and it, it shows when he plays, it seems like... His, his main goal with Reinhardt is to have fun, you know? And I, I think that works to their benefit, especially when they play around Bambi as well as they've done today. For sure. I mean, Eichenwald was one of his weaker maps today, but overall he has been pretty consistent with being able to just go in and be able to get out because his sports just put in so many resources, but... You will see what happens on the defense here as uh, double shield coming in from KO, but Honey just trying to distract from the back, but Arfal gets picked up by the fire strike and diving Phoenix, all committing on the point. Bambi gets rid of Slim with the pin. Doc getting rid of Zombie Dylan, just swinging on him. Turrets from Lee Ratty on the Sim teleport and diving Phoenix quickly take point A and KO can now only draw this map. And I think that's that's just kind of a, a healer difference there. I, I right now I, I definitely like the the Brig Lucio a lot more, especially if you want to play it with that very aggressive double shield with the Rhine. They got onto point really quickly, and the, the Mercy Moira, while it is good on defense with the double shield, it's just it's not that's not the position you want to be in with those healers. Is you do see the teleporter right side, and Slim on the Arisa getting blitzed, but. They will be able to stay alive. Zombie Dylan on the McCree, charging up that high noon pretty fast, already 50%, and he just swapped to it. But Slim and Arfal get picked off quickly, and the Symmetra is putting in work. And Diving Phoenix take Hanamura, and we might go to a map five. Oh my. Man, I, I, if, if Diving Phoenix play like that again, though, no, I have... I don't think that's gonna oh. be a possibility in that fight because that was that was surgical there from Timing Phoenix on their defense there, cycling alts incredibly well. And and look at that, you can kinda see in the corner of that play of the game where, where Steph was positioned. He was positioned way up on the high ground, just kinda doing a lot of healing, almost never died, throwing in immortality fields when he needed to. You know, we we talked about Steph not really playing the Baptiste, and we were wondering how he was going to be. Well, he was pretty great, and again, kind of an unsung hero there in that in that map. I don't know if you guys I just... realized, but uh, poor Lady of Siren got caught, not able to finish out that last fight with the rest of uh, their team. And so that entire last fight with the, was a 5v6. Lady of Siren was still on point A in their spawn. Oh, that is Big rough. unfortunate because oh, they weren't really? able to. Yeah, they weren't able to come back in time. Um, uh, they were caught out by the support line for Diving Phoenix, which forced Lady of Siren to stay back. And... Um, I think interesting. I think Diving Phoenix called that out and was like, "Push in, push in." Yikes! Yeah, and especially that Lady of rough. Siren was on the Ash, not a mobile hero at all. You know, maybe could have gotten back to that choke on point B and fired in some shots, but Diving Phoenix played that so fast, I don't even know if it would have mattered. I did not even notice that actually. That is definitely why, and especially going into that. Uh, Symmetra who can just beam down the the tanks incredibly quickly That was definitely an unfortunate set of circumstances I just, so. I just thought about it Kirby last time we commented together was KO versus Nova and the last time the last two games We've commentated for KO were on the map pool where Hanamura was in it 
and both times I'm pretty sure they got full held or almost full held and I think both maps they lost Hanamura. So KO statistically not very good on Hanamura. Um, so we'll see what happens on Dorado, but I if you think about it in their last Dor uh, Hanamura showings this season, they have not looked good. Yeah, they got full held against uh, Pizza Planet. They did get a couple. They got a couple ticks on. Uh, they actually on, uh, against um, Nova, but Nova. Nova they actually to... went to second point. They capped first point, but couldn't cap second against Nova. Yeah, and yeah. I guess we, we we did see Cosmic Omnix beat Diving Peanut or not Diving Peanut. Dark Nova. Dive on Hanamura uh, yeah, last Dark week, Dark. so. But yeah, but, definitely yeah. Uh, a weak point. And I, I was going to mention this at some point just randomly in the server, but <laughs> speaking of struggling on maps, the, the tater pots, and this is kind of going off topic, but the tater pots, I couldn't even believe it when I saw it, have not won a single control map this season. Jesus. 0-9. That's All rough. three on Busan, no one two on Oasis, Elios, and Nepal. Ooh, that is that is not that is not good. <laughs> Gotta run that double shield <laughs> Reaper <laughs> on much, Oasis. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you win Oasis is just Reaper with double shield or Zarya. But we'll see Dorado if Ko can take this to a map five and. Oh god, this will be a long one if it gets taken to a map 5. Whew. But I'd love to go back to control as well, because that, that has definitely been the closest map so far. It's kind of funny, the other oh, for sure. two maps were actually kind of one-sided in the favor of each team. Cosmic Omnix almost getting the full hold there on Eichenwald. on Eichenwald and not allowing them to get past the initial choke, and they, they even got it the distance in a very short amount of time, but obviously Diving Phoenix there absolutely destroying both points there in like three minutes. That was definitely one of the shorter Hanamuras we've seen this season. But but we saw Nepal. It was it was pretty close for the most part. Yeah. Um and I believe our tiebreaker map is Ilios? It is, uh, I think, I, actually, I believe it's Oasis. Is it Oasis? <laughs> yeah, I think so. That is interesting, because Oasis is a map that I think very heavily favors a double shield, Ryan Zarya kind of thing. Like, University is more of a Ryan Zarya thing, but City Center and Gardens are double shield. Um, but if you put Rocky in on Oasis, that Junkrat puts in a lot of work because there's a lot of very small entryways um, on Oasis. So if we do go to a map 5, I do think we see Rocky top and maybe Lady of Siren on the same DPS line. Looks like Just we are going to see... Okay, so I, I did not jinx him. We are going to see Wukong playing three maps tonight. Woo! Yeah, I'm sorry. The and only yeah. difference was uh, Birch is going to come in instead of AJ um, for SR, uh, you know, to balance out the SR for them. And that, that could be why yes. AJ isn't playing tonight. Maybe some SR issues. SR I, I guess reasons. The only thing is, like, if he's not getting playtime now, like, how is he gonna get playtime with Kakashi in, who I think is like 2,900? It's like, so it's gonna be kind of, it, it, it's tough. You definitely want a player. Put in Pixie later. Calibers, AJ. Initiating yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Pixie later. That's, you know, despite being one of the only bronzes yeah, in the league. Um, oh. I, I can show some nice things every once in a while, you know, like, I actually really like their Baptiste play, a couple times we've seen them play the Baptiste and they do pretty well on the, on using Immortalities effectively and providing a lot of healing, so, 
And I don't know if we've seen that combo at all, Pixie later and AJ. That would be maybe kind of an interesting one, where you could have you know kind of the more carry or oriented support and just you know kind of more of a role player kind of sit in the background, just being that second healer that the team needs. You know. As you said, I believe we do have someone on their debut for Diving Phoenix, Zephria. Or were they playing last week? Um, I do not remember if Zephria they did. Zephria is new. Zephria okay. was signed so, 15th of in July. Get, gonna make a uh, yeah, debut here on the Tracer. Let's we'll see. Maybe coming in, hopefully to to replace Dark Train. Who I, I I'm not 100 percent sure is playing for this team anymore. He I, is I not playing him. anymore. He's okay. a cheerleader. He yeah, might have I left the I, server. I that. But Rocky Top gets a pick on the Bambi on this junk rat, and already you see Rocky Top on this junk rat putting in work. But Zephria in the back lines, kind of watching their spawn, maybe trying to spawn camp this Mercy. That's what they're going to try to do, but the Mercy gets away. No! Zephria is able to stay in that back line and put in the work. But you do see Zombie Dylan kind of making sure they can't get out. But Honey gets taken out by Rocky Top. That's a big factor for Diving Phoenix winning this fight. A pin from Slim on the Reinhardt instead of Swede getting Bambi. Swede on the Wrecking Ball. John Hawk lonely on the Sigma with only. Feralgatron on the Moira, not able to stay alive. Doc with the break, just trying to go in, maybe break bash that um, spin to win Wrecking Ball, but doesn't. Bambi is not able to recontest, and you see Zephria still in the back line as Tracer, but finally gets taken down. You know, it's funny, we were talking about, hey, they do got the Wrecking Ball guy in Kakashi. Well, here's the Swede playing the Wrecking Ball, and something back on the Ryan, so just seems like these tank players can play pretty much every tank. So. They gotta be listening to us. It's like every time we say something, they do the opposite. Like, you have the Kakashi player, you have the ball player in Kakashi, Sweet plays ball. You have Wu playing more than three maps, gets benched. Oh, stick on the Wu. He does fade away, though. Zephria caught in the back line on this Tracer. Re recall is used. You see Honey getting pressured on the high ground by Swede. Mines come through. Slim still has the Shatter, might be looking for it here. Rocky also with the tire. Shatter from Bambi. Shatter onto Bambi. Comes from Slim. Valve used by Birchface just to keep her team alive. You see Zombie Dylan getting Honey on that high ground. Zombie Dylan still on the high ground as Ash. You don't want to have him on there. Uncontested. Zeph Zephria gets rocked. Rocky too. And... That's gonna be a one fight for Diving Phoenix. And, and Cosmic Omnix, they were kind of doing everything right. I liked the aggression they were playing with the Wrecking Ball, putting the mines in that choke, causing Diving Phoenix to back up. But, I mean, just overall a good disengage, and they kind of let John Hawk come back with that Gravitic Flux. And then Zephyr was kind of able to just pick off the stragglers. Waiting on the high ground, Zombie Dylan gets Honey. Bambi pinning in, maybe trying to catch Slim. Slim falling low. Tire is used. Gets Doc. Stick on to Slim. Slim goes down, and Zephria on this tracer, putting in a lot of work. Gets two, but gets taken down by Swede. Gets rolled, as Wrecking Ball would love to say. Bambi, though, you still have two tanks of Moira and Asher. Why, but every time I say that, Zombie Dylan caps Honey Biscuit in the head. Rocky Top, though, on this flank, trying to do something here, but Zephria does spot him and gets the cliff on him. Sweet maybe tries to take away that pressure, but gets chased down by Zephria, but is able to get out. And Zephria's tracer is proving to be quite good. Might be the tracer specialist of yeah, what a, uh, Diving Phoenix. What a great play. It was able to stick uh, Slim Thick and take out the resin resting first base and kind of cleaned up at the end of that fight. So, great debut here from Zephyr, who's almost at another pulse ball. You see Swede using that, the minefield, maybe to try and get some initiation. Bob 
gets rocked as the entry comes in from Zombie Dylan. A bop from Honey used now, but Slim gets rid of Dr. Grill. Dynamite from Zombie Dylan gets nothing. Honey actually pops up. Be Dylan this time, and the Mercy. Now just trying to put in more work. Honey though, catches herself in the middle of the battlefield and Slim just hammers her down. It's only John Hawk and the Moira left. Pin in from Slim. Actually, it's Zephyr on the Tracer, still on cart. Annoying Wu. Tracer is a very good stall here. Gets Wukong. Zephria is still alive on this cart. They gotta get that Tracer. And here come the reinforcements. They're about to get all six back. Final ball low. A big shatter from Bambi. Birchface uses the Valk to try and keep him alive. Sweet goes down the wrecking ball. And there goes Slim. And Zephria on the Tracer. Finally gets taken out by Rocky. This could be their opportunity. But Zombie Dylan has to get a pick here. Or Rocky top. But it looks like no. They have to pull back. And Zephria on the Tracer has another pulse bomb. And this is where I start to not, once again, like the, the Mercy Moira. I I think you need that rig in order to try and shut down that Tracer, just causing so much pressure in the back lines. Mercy and Moira are just hard to It's Zombie Joan gets the headshot on. That could be huge. And Zephria out of the fight. Tire comes in oh. from top, gets oh. four, and that spells disaster. For diving Phoenix, as when it looks, it, when it is all said and done, KL pulls through when it looks over. You know, you could actually argue that that wasn't so bad for diving Phoenix. They held on to basically all of their alts. They're coming in to this next fight with the Gravitic Flux. They'll probably initiate with that, and maybe the rally or the coalescence. So they they have the ult advantage. Here, so. Yeah, Bambi gets picked off early by Rocky Top Zephyria though. Still on that back line. Gets Zombie Dylan. Still back there looking for the Mercy. Swede gets Dr. Grill who switched to the Zarya. Honey gets Birchface with the dynamite taking down, but Swede beams down Zephyria. Maybe the Zarya pick was to help with the um, Tracer as if you're dragging this good enough. Tracer can't do much with a high charge Zarya. Bambi pins in, but is in trouble here. He's all on his own. And KO could snowball through here, but Zephria comes back on the Tracer and gets a pick on the Rocky Top. Slim gets taken down by John Hawk. Shatter comes in from Slim. Keeps swinging for Algatron. Able to get out on the um, Moira. Grab used. Wu and Zombie Dylan still alive. Bambi coming back in. Big Shatter! But is it enough? He pins oh. Slim into Zombie Dylan who got nice. stuck. Zephria. Is still on the oh, is alive again on the tracer, putting in work. Gets Wu, gets Birch, and Zephria on the tracer is popping off. Can't stop the man. And, uh, no, right as I say that, he gets popped in the head. Oh god, I need to stop talking. That was insane because Zephria, I think, pins Slim Thick. Or, or no, sticks Slim Thick, and then Bambi pins him, and is able to take out Zombie Dylan with that, so... Kind of interesting synergy there with the pulse bomb and the pin. Bombs are traded. Honey's in the back line. Both supports falling low for KO. Will they be able to survive? Honey gets a pick on the Woo. John Hawk gets her to sweep. Slim pins in as a last resort. Does get taken down. Resting Birchface as well. And now that will be KO held there, and I, I'm, I think this is justified saying off the back of Zephyr's Tracer. Yeah, that was an exceptional performance there from Zephyria. I mean, especially that 4K there at the end, not only getting that uh, 2K with the Pulse Bomb, but then able to get two others with that just... Great debut here from Zephyria. Um, one thing that's funny is that you see Honey kind of on the other side of the DPS pool for this team. Honey, she had a couple good moments, but getting caught out a lot by Zombie Dylan on this high ground and Sweet on the Wrecking Ball. Honey finally gets kind of shut down, but Zephyria on the back uh, puts Diving Phoenix in the backpack and. 
carries them to a hold on Tracer. Now playing the far on attack. Questionable and, and decision the... to get a zombie Dylan. Well, this is the scenario that we were talking about earlier. If Honey Biscuits can take out Zombie Dylan or just contest him long enough for him to have to ignore the Pharah, then this comp will work beautifully because from the top won't be able to obviously contest it. So Unless we'll, we'll kind of have to see. Zombie Dylan Unless will have the sightline advantages on the defense here, though, so Honey Biscuits is going to have a tougher time to get in position. Kirby, but Junkrat's a hit scan. I think you forgot about that. Drunk is a hit skip. Um, I mean, I guess maybe. Rocky actually trying to do it. He's, he's lobbing nades at Zephria. Nothing doing them. As you do see a dive coming in. Driving things. Bambi on the D.Va. John Hawk gets rid of Slim. Zephria is in the air, putting in the pressure with the rockets. Finally drops down. Slim gets res, but Zephria gets rid of Zombie Dylan. Honey gets rid of Rocky Top, and Sweet just putting in the pressure on the Zarya. Zephyria gets blue, and that is gonna be all she wrote for the defensive uh, KO. Is Zephyria continues to pop off on DPS? Jesus. And, and yeah, that's kind of gonna be the win condition here for Diving Phoenix is just taking out Zombie Dylan as early as they can because not only will that enable the far, it'll enable Honey Biscuits to have free sight lines as well. But KO got a couple picks, but they weren't able to touch it. Zephria does get rezzed. Yeah, that, that was unfortunate. It looked like they were kind of turning that fight, but obviously not in a position. They might have also fed if they had touch point anyway, so it was one of those things where... I mean, alt charge, I guess, if you're looking for silver lines. Mm -hmm, for sure. You just see the high ground taken from these two dive tanks, though, making sure Zombie Dylan can't use it as the Ash. A drop from John Hawk onto Slim as Slim swinging back on him, though. John Hawk re engages with the jump straight up in the air. Grab from Sweet actually grabs the rest of the team away from John Hawk, so he has no support. And Rocky Top, the after bombs get Zephria. Oh no, he does get rezzed, but. He's stuck in that room as, oh wait, just flies right out. But he left the mercy to die. Is that though? So Zephyr behind Zephyr on the star, the barrage! One, two, almost a third, but we'll find him. Slim, might, they might be able to send this firearm for your diving Phoenix if you can engage fast enough. Bambi engaging on that diva, trying to put pressure. Rocky Top with the tire though, might be shutting it down by killing Honey. John Hawk though, you see the Primal Rage coming out, just trying to battle him away. Brawl Gatron uses the rest on the honey, but there's no rest for the far if it gets taken down. Bob thrown in by Zombie Dylan. Big shatter from Slim. Knocks down two. No follow-up comes through though. The Bob. Putting in work. Shooting the Mer the Valk to Mercy, but Brawl Gatron does get out of Valk in time. But Zombie Dylan able to take that high ground back, and now you it's gonna be hard to contest it. Wait, and I, I, Phoenix, all I don't know. Down on this I don't know about those three ults that they use. Both shattered. And Bomb the comes in from Bambi doesn't get anything. Zephria though, and oh, that's two picks immediately from Diving Phoenix. John Hawk does get bounced back. Pin from Slim that gets killed. Grab from Sweet, maybe trying to do something. Rocky Top does get the far though. Like I said, Junkrat's a hit scan, but it does get res. Oh, that is um... so, so one thing that's kind of genius about this comp is you've actually got dive tanks and, and John Hawk and Bambi, they're putting so much pressure on Zombie Dylan that Zephyria is just kind of getting away with flying through the air anyway. So I don't know, maybe you need to see Rocky Ooh, Top switch on me for sure. Take Zephyria out, Rocky Top though. On the flank on the jump rat, trying to limit the high ground from Honey. She throws the dynamite in, burning Rocky Top by Zephyria gets pressed. Zephria looking to get back in the air, uses the barrage, bomb gets dropped, Sweet gets rid of Zephria, but the bomb gets Rocky Top, who was using this tire. Didn't get anything though, and Honey on this high ground is able to get Zombie Dylan. No contest left from KO. Listen, they did use a couple alts there, KO did, they used the tire and they used the Valkyrie. I I almost think Rocky Top really needs to go to the Reaper here to try and oh, so stop John Hawk. 
I, well, well, that's the thing though, I, I don't know. Rocky right. Top plays a lot of hit scan. Mostly known for projectile. Yeah. yeah. Zephyr flanks around in the far though. And gets Zombie Dylan. That is. That is very tragic. First face caught by himself. By himself. And Zephyr gets another pick. John Hawk on the Winston just batting him away. Bambi gets slim. And. Diving Phoenix might take Dorado commandingly on attack with this dive. We might see one more contest, especially Zombie Dylan should be able to throw a bob in here. John Hawk though is there on the Winston just trying to pursue some damage. Zephyr throwing the rockets in there. Bob overshot, but wait, Frogatron caught in the back using Val. Doesn't dive, but there goes. And KO has some life left with that. Just burst of kills in the feed. John, uh, John Hawk gets right, Zombie Dylan. Oh, Zephria has Barrage. Wait, Zephria uses Barrage. It's still, it's a dodge, a 2v1. Diva Bomb used by Bambi. But Bambi gets killed, and that is going to be the end of that fight. Use of Diva Bomb, questionable there, unless he's switching. The, the big the big thing for KO there is they were able to keep both of their uh, tank odds. They, they almost the only tire. had to use... Yeah, they almost only had to use Bob there. Wukong had to use Coalescence, and I think that was obviously what they needed to do to close out that Zephria, team, though, oh. back on the Tracer. Oh, no. Zephria is on Zombie the Tracer. Zombie Dylan on the, on the McCree, exhausted. though. But Zombie Dylan immediately gets Sean Hawk. That's what they needed. Ch Zombie Dylan on the McCree gets two. Zephyr gets the DMAC on the Swede though. Bambi still on this high ground is dealing damage, but Swede just get using that Diva Mac to get their mech back, but Zephria behind them on the Tracer 53 through the pulse bomb looks for the one clip. Zombie Dylan flashes him, but he is able to recall out and hide as KO looking a uh, Diving Phoenix looking for a re-engage. Zephyr on this high ground just annoying them. Zombie Dylan can't focus everyone as he is supposed to counter that Winston, Diva, and uh Tracer as Zephria in the back line looking for a one clip. Honey gets rid of Rocky Top. Bomb dropped by Swede. Gets two. Mercy Burst gets the rest on the Rocky Top. And it now looks John Hawk gets rest though by Coralcatron. Jumps back onto the Reinhardt. Mercy Burst gets picked by Honey Biscuits. Coralcatron with the battle. Mercy gets Zombie Dylan. Honey Biscuits on the high ground. And wait, Diving Phoenix has a chance. Slim. Big shatter. Bob comes in though from Honey. Bambi gets a pick on the slim. Zephyria still on this tracer. Gets Woo. Tire used by Rocky Top. Coming from the spawn. Can it get something big? It gets two. That might be enough. Zombie Dylan on the tracer. Trying oh to stall for KO Honey gets a pick. Frogatron resists the Winston. Rocky Top on the Junkrat, trying to help Wu, uses the fade to get the slim and rent and heal. And oh, Zephria no, gets the me. stick! That might be the game! Bambi, boss, but so does Sweet. Sweet gets taken out by Zephria again. Rocky Top using the mind to get on the point, but is already one shot. And Diving Phoenix takes the game! And that will be it. Oh my. Zephria on the Tracer is insane but rocky gets play and resting burge face flying into the pulse spawn that is incredibly unfortunate i mean obviously trying to heal the rhyme there not nothing wrong with that just unfortunate probably already started the valkyrie as the stick came through so Work I, I don't know if it would have mattered in that fight but ah oh, so close i one other thing is is uh, I think it was Slim Thick not able to see Feralgatron getting the res onto John Hawk. That was the fight yeah, saver. Was, uh, if they could have pinned him or even maybe gotten just a couple of swings, like that would have been massive. Cancel the res, at least. But jeez, that that was rough. That was a yeah, rough. I mean, rough that that was so map. close to being a uh, map five, but honestly, I if I I I want to, and I know you might disagree, I want to give DPS MVP to Sephria. I I, agree I would not with be that. against that. I would not be <laughs> against that. They kind of 
I'm not gonna say they they carried on that last map. That might be the reason Diamond John Phoenix Hawk won Dorado played. though, because John Hawk definitely played well as John also, Hawk but, played yeah. well, but it was just like Zephria making sure the backlines were distracted so they couldn't really capitalize on John Hawk's overextends because the DPS had to peel for the supports and the one thing that Winston kind of gets destroyed by our DPS jumping on top of him once he jumps in but since the DPS were occupied there was no real real front line there was no front line from KO because they didn't have a back line so yeah I'm definitely thinking Zephria for yeah, DPS it's tough to give it for for one map but that one map I mean for a debut there is that was something special I, I think for, it's uh, oh good I was going to say, as for tanks, so here's the thing I'm thinking. I, I, I would like to give support MVP to Wukong. I think he actually played quite well in those three math playing a lot of... You know, I was normally actually thinking plays a of, lot giving, of Moira. I was thinking of giving support MVP to Doc, because Dr. Grill played exceptionally well all four maps for Dot and Phoenix. I can get behind that. I do agree that Doc did a great, 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 great job, especially on that last point as Britt. I think we um, give Swede to MVP. But I think I, I agree with Kirby more because we was supporting the tanks so well while resting Birch uh, was like pocketing, you know, uh, the DPS. Uh, and ultimately, I just I think Wu did a great job contesting point, you know, and supporting the tanks. But Doctor was there were just a couple times where I thought Doctor was getting a little too aggressive, um, and acting like the front line when Bambi wasn't there. I think that's the only reason I would have to agree with Kirby there to give Wu the MVP for support. I I do see that, but like Diving Phoenix's front line was nowhere near as good KOs, I think, in this game and for those first three maps. So it's like yeah, I can it's, see it's the definitely... support MVP going to KO, but like Diving Phoenix's front line doesn't really get the MVP for something that KO really excelled at more. I I think that uh, KO's tank line w did a great job, especially the Swede and Slim duo there. Uh, I, I think that was a great, 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 great performance from both of them. The synergy, you could like feel it through the through the rounds, through the maps. Um, but I think John Hawk did nasty good on Winston, and I think Bambi did really great tonight, um, especially on that last push. There were like performances that Bambi would pull that were like really significant and and you know clutch for diving Phoenix tonight that was a that was a great dive that they ran on Dorado there and I, I just liked John Hawk's flexibility a lot kind of flexing a lot given a lot of looks tonight playing that Sigma playing the Winston I think he even played they, they were the Arissa there on on mm -hmm. Nepal right yeah so wait were they I'm pretty sure Bambi was the actually the Arissa was it? Oh, wait, no, when Bambi was running Ryan, uh, John Hawk was zero, so yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm kind of inclined to give it to John Hawk. I think he played really well. I think you could definitely argue that Cosmic Omnic's tank line as a whole was a little better than Diving Phoenix tonight, but I think that John Hawk really kind of put himself out there, especially there on Dorado with the Winston play. I, I, I'm, That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking... Zephyr, I can hear uh, John Hawk, Wukong. Alright. Okay, so um, uh, is that MVPs? MVPs? Yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah. MVP is going to go to John Hawk, DPS is going to go to Zephra. Uh, I think we're saying that wrong. Zephria? Zephria. Um, Zephria. I've been saying Zephria. Wu. So, um, yep. great job tonight from both of these teams. Um, any closing comments? Um, well, we're we're done with tier three for the for the map rotation. We'll have an off week. Stay tuned for the power rankings and the podcast. Shameless plug. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll see you next week. A lot of a lot of great matchups. We're really getting close to playoff time. Diving Phoenix clinched their spot tonight. Cosmic Omnics, Nova, Corgi Core, They're still looking for those spots those as well. Ho hopefully. Sliding into Maybe those top tantalizers. three or four C's. If we we'll can see. turn it around. Anything can happen. <laughs> Anything can happen at this point. Especially with the 
tricky schedule that Valhalla has down the stretch. It'll be, I want to make a shout out. Um, I what might be streaming later. Um, my new Twitch username is the same as my PSN, uh, Zennyboy05. I don't think there's any capitals. Um, check it out. Okay, uh, Shameless if that's blood. everything from you guys, uh, y'all have a great night. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.